Hey everyone, we're going to do a small video here just because I was really struggling with the whole using delays uh, for the attribute initialization and I think we can do a more generic way. We could do a better way of letting the game know when the attributes are initialized and everything. So back in the character, we have this broadcast initial values that's blueprint callable. Uh, what I want to do is stop and I want to make this a, I want to make this a function on the base character. So I want to say virtual void broadcast initial values. We're going to do that. And then we're going to make a definition for it. And we're just going to say intentionally let left blank for now <clears throat> so now i have that back here in the player i can say virtual void broadcast initial values and then in the player i should still have that defined right with the on health change and on that okay so i have that so let's go back in the enemy and say virtual void broadcast initial values override and we're not going to call super. We're just going to do kind of like the player. If is valid RPG attributes. Then we can say on health changed with the RPG attributes. We can get health. And then RPG attributes. We can get max health. So that'll do that. But how are we going to bind callbacks to dependencies and broadcast initial values on this replicated. What we're going to want to do is we're going to make a delegate on the ability system component. We're going to come up here and this is a C++ delegate. So we're going to declare multicast delegate and we're just going to call it F on attributes given. And then we're going to come in the public section and we're going to make an, uh, f on attributes given called on attributes given and in the ability system component.cpp in the initialized default attributes we can just right after it says apply we could say on attributes given dot broadcast so after the gameplay effect is applied and all the attributes are handled the values will be changed by the time this attribute given is broadcast so back in the enemy base, I'm going to come into the private section and I'm going to make a boolean called b init attributes and I'm going to set that equal to false and I'll mark it with a u property and the only thing I'm going to say is replicated using on rep init attribute init attributes which means I need to come down here and make a void on rep init attributes. I don't need the old value, but I do need to mark it with a U function. And because we're going to get replicated, we're going to need to virtual void, get lifetime replicated props, and we can generate definitions for these two. In the get lifetime replicated props, I just do rep lifetime for the A enemy base, and this is B init attributes, and then on so what we'll do is we'll say in begin play before we init the ability actor info we'll bind callbacks to dependencies and inside the bind callback to dependencies i already know the ability system component is here and we could do that but um, because we're only giving the attributes on the server in the initialized default attributes then what i'm going to say is if has authority I can take the RPG ability system comp and I can say the on attributes given dot add lambda capturing this and then there's no params that it's sending us but all I have to do is say b init attributes equals true. And then when that happens on the server b init attributes is true that means our attributes have changed and they've already broadcast out to the clients to replicate. Right, so those attributes are already down the pipeline to be replicated first, and then after that, it's going to call the delegate, and the delegate will change this. And since the init attributes is changing from false to true, then the rep notify will will fire. 
So I can simply say broadcast the initial values inside the onrep init attribute and it will broadcast out my health changed. But where do I do it on the server is after I init the class defaults then I can just simply broadcast initial values right here in the class defaults as well. So now I should have everybody binding to the callbacks. Only the server is going to bind to this attributes given, but it'll broadcast the initial values. When it replicates, it'll call broadcast initial values for the clients, and then it'll shoot its health out more so like that. So we're going to rebuild and open the project. Okay, so now we're back in the project. We're going to open up the primary enemy. And then now <clears throat> we shouldn't need any of this. That should just go away, right? Because if I hit play, uh-oh, the following blueprints have compiler errors. What happened to our third person character? Oh no, broadcast initial values. Uh-oh. When I took this to character base, I didn't make this blueprint callable. New function blueprint callable. Um, I can't save this because it won't compile. I could just, yeah, I could just delete these for now so I could save. Okay, sorry, we're gonna have to reload now that I did the blueprint callable. I missed that. Okay, now that we're back here again, let's come back into the character and then back here again, we'll say broadcast initial values. That'll be back. And then we can say broadcast initial values. That'll be back. So now here we go. So what happens? Now, the enemy health bar is filled in 100%, <clears throat> both on the client and on the server. But instead of using our hacky delays, now we're doing it on delegates and timed events. So it was loaded pretty much instantly after the game started, even though uh, you know it was all done just based off those replicated variables. So we could do this stuff with timing and do it a lot better than using just delays everywhere.